Welcome to HDTV. You're now rocking with your boy. Now, in the Los Angeles Times story written by David G. Savage, the Supreme Court sides with Trump on building border wall with diverted military funds. The Supreme Court has allowed President Trump to defy Congress and continue to spend more than $6 billion diverted from military funds to pay for the construction of a border wall in parts of Arizona, New Mexico, Texas, and California. By 5 the 4 vote, the justices on Friday rebuffed lawyers for the Sierra Club and House Democrats who sued to challenge Trump's diversion of funds as illegal and unconstitutional. They won rulings before judges in California and Texas, but in a brief order last summer, the court allowed Trump to continue spending the disputed funds while the litigation continues. But over the dissents, yeah, the dissents of the four liberal justices who said the decision would likely operate in effect as a final judgment, the court kept that order in place. Last week, lawyers for the ACLU and the Sierra Club filed an emergency appeal arguing that the court's order would permit the border wall projects to be completed before the high court ever gets a chance to rule on whether the spending was legal. House Democrats filed a brief in support of the appeal. Keeping the stay in place offers Trump's a complete victory without having prevailed in any court, they told the justices. The case offers a stark example of how the president can defy the Constitution and its separation of powers with an assistance from the high court. Early last year, Trump demanded $5.7 billion for the border wall, but the House of Representatives under the Democratic control refused, triggering a partial government shutdown that lasted 35 days. The impasse ended with Trump signed a new spending bill that did not include the border wall funding he sought. But a day later, he declared a national emergency and ordered the Pentagon to transfer $2.5 billion to pay for border wall projects. The administration said the new barriers extended up to 130 miles were designed to prevent drug smuggling Later, Trump ordered the transfer of another $3.6 billion for new border barriers in Texas. The Constitution says no money shall be drawn from the Treasury, but in consequence of appropriations made by law. In Trump's defense, administration lawyers cited a provision in law that authorized the transfer of military funds in emergencies. However, as lower court judges pointed out, the law says these transfers must be based on unforeseen military requirements and in no case where the item for which funds are requested has been denied by the Congress. They said Trump transfers failed on both counts. They need to stop drug smuggling or immigrants from crossing the border was not unforeseen. And Congress did indeed deny the requested funds for the border wall. But the high court has handcuffed Congress and others who seek to block the executive branch from taking allegedly illegal actions. Lawmakers as well as ordinary citizens do not have standing to sue to challenge unconstitutional spending. The Sierra Club sued on behalf of environmentalists and Native Americans who claim the border wall would damage or destroy sensitive habitats near the border. They were granted standing in the lower courts, but that alone was not enough to obtain court ruling, at least according to the justices. Last year, the five more conservative justices issued a one-line, unsigned explanation of their decision to give Trump a green light to proceed despite the lower court orders. Among the reasons is that the government has made a sufficient showing at this age, I mean at this stage that the plaintiffs have no cause of action to obtain a review of the acting secretary's compliance with the provision that authorizes the transfer of military funds. They said by a five to four vote in Trump versus Sierra Club, this suggests that because Congress did not specifically authorize lawsuits over this part of the military spending law, no one may go to court to contest an allegedly illegal transfer. The result is to shield the president and his administration from legal claims that he is diverting government funds to be spent for other purposes. After the stay was granted last summer, 
The case went back before U.S. District Judge Hayward Gilliam in Oakland. He ruled the transfers were illegal, and he issued another order that will bar further spending of the military funds for building border walls. The Ninth Court of Appeals agreed June 26 in a 2-1 decision. This set the stage for the administration to file a formal appeal with the Supreme Court seeking review of the ruling. But that would take months and would not yield a ruling until sometime in the first half of the next year. That prospect of delay prompted last week's effort to have the justices lift the stay and block further construction of the wall. This caused concerns a protracted and public ap appropriations debate irreparable damage to a protected landscape, substantial separation of powers concerns, and the diversion of billions of taxpayer dollars to a project that Congress refused to fund. Attorneys for the Sierra Club and ACLU told the court, but their appeal was denied. Jor Ladin, a staff attorney Yeah, I'm sorry about that. Um a staff attorney with the ACLU's National Security Project said opponents of the wall would not give up the legal battle. Every lower court to consider the question has ruled President Trump's border wall illegal and the Supreme Court's temporary order does not decide the case, he said. The administration has admitted that the wall can be taken down if we ultimately prevail and we will hold them to their word and seek the removal of every mile of excuse me, and seek the removal of every mile of unlawful will, I mean, unlawful wall built. Okay, <clears throat> if you still stuck around after I read that BS, I thank you a lot <laughs> because th this, is, this is what I don't understand. You got all this money, but yet you can't pay reparations. And I know people hear my videos and they're like, why does he keep talking about reparations? Because reparations will put blacks on an even playing field with the pink folk. That's why I'm talking about it. But not to get off topic, you're trying to build a wall. Think about this. We already have walls up that basically separate Mexico from the U.S. They've been built one. So what, why are you finna build another wall? That don't make any sense. And the drug smuggling, you guys are the ones who, who smuggle the drugs in the country. How does the drugs get here? How do the drugs get dropped in the hoods in the poor areas of America? How do the guns get brought in? How do guns end up in the hoods and the poor, impoverished parts of America? Because you guys put them there. Listen. This is systematic at its best. Systematic, a systematic control that they're using, which is going to continue funding drugs, funding guns to continue letting blacks kill themselves. He's talking about all this, I'm building a wall, but no, you're taking money out the military fund when those people who fight hard for this country this country, a lot of those men and women, you're taking money from them. And I've said this a long time ago. He's going to run this country into the ground. He's going to bankrupt it. Just like all of his business. Everywhere Trump goes, things fail. I know it looks good on the outside right now, but that's just nothing but puff pieces. You got to see through the BS. Donald Trump is nothing more than a petulant child. This guy here talks about he wants to keep the immigrants out. Your wife is an immigrant. Your wife and her family are immigrants. So to me, this guy here is an idiot. And Congress, they need to be slapped in the face. I mean, the court, excuse me, the Supreme Court, they need to be slapped in the face for allowing this fookery to go on this fookery to continue to happen. It, it doesn't make any sense. You're dividing the military funds up when the military funds are for the people who are fighting in this country. This is a military country anyway.
because all the money goes toward the military and everybody else get the scraps. But you're using funds and then he still was spending funds when they had this on trial, when they told him the first time you can't do that. And he still does it. And this is the thing I don't get. You guys hate Obama. This is what's funny. Everybody hate Obama. He did this. He did that. Right? He He's such a bad president, right? But the thing is, everyone wants to say, oh, Obama, what did he do for the black food? What did he do for the blacks? What did he do for the hood? That wasn't Obama's job. Obama's job was to run a country. What have all the other white presidents done for the hood? Huh? What has Donald Trump done for the hoods and the neighborhoods? They're still killing each other. You see, we don't never hold white people to any standard or the pink folk. We always hold black people to standards like Michael Jordan. Oh, why Michael Jordan ain't, ain't, ain't give no money to the um give no money to the hoods and the neighborhoods. Why his shoe so high? Why Nike did it? Nike's his boss. Why we didn't attack Nike? Huh? Then they're like, oh, well, Kobe didn't speak out. Kobe never spoke out when he was here. What? Why you ain't go talk to Larry Bird? Why Larry Bird ain't speak out? Huh? Why he didn't speak out? Why didn't Tom Brady speak out? Why didn't Derek Carr speak out? I mean, well, I think Derek Carr did for um, blacks, but um, I'm just saying. Why didn't, I'm just saying, for example, why didn't Drew Brees talk about blacks or anything, talk about their living conditions or talk about the black on black crime and the killings? Why isn't he speaking up? You see, that's the thing. We always think a black person got to come back and save us when the white people are the ones who are oppressing us and the ones who putting us in this system. Donald Trump, is a perfect example of white privilege. <laughs> He's a perfect example of white privilege, or I like to call the pink privilege. He is a perfect example. He could do whatever he want. He can curse out a bunch of minorities and blacks included. He can say whatever he want, effort right in the ussy, but as soon as Deshaun Jackson say something that's a true statement made by Hitler, talking about how the Jews have done us dirty and have continued to put us in this systematic racism and continue to kill us and, and, and keep us down when it comes to trying to get our finances up or trying to be able to, to support our family. But we have to pay a lot in interest loans or interest rates. We have to pay the high. We get taxed the most, but nobody wants to fight for that. So personally, the wall to me is a dumb idea because we already have a wall. Second, you want to keep the drug smugglers out. Um, how are you going to do that when drugs has continued to keep this country afloat? Drugs keeps this country moving. It always has. And the ones who are the drug dealers, the biggest drug dealers is the United States of America. They're just putting this out. Trump going to take that money and go ball out somewhere with it. <laughs> but one of the things that was said in the article is, is that um, even if they build it, if, if they have another, if they take it back to court and the ruling goes in to the opposite's favor, then they could take the wall down. But by then you'll be too late because you'll destroy all the, the um, you'll destroy the landscape that is being honored by the Native Americans, but they don't care. They stole the whole country, so who cares? <laughs> they don't give a damn. And I keep trying to tell people, people be fighting for Trump and fighting the presidency. Don't give a damn about the people. It don't give a damn about anybody. The presidency was made to have a person seem like they're in charge to coerce the public in what they're doing and while everybody else in the background make the decisions. All it is is the president is the face of the company. That's it. He's a face of a company. That's it. The people who run it is Congress and the representatives and, and the people that's in the executive branch office along with the president. 
So it's not just him running the country. It's three branches who run the country. So, but we've gotten out of that. We don't know our history. We're dumb. We're, we're, we're naive to it. But all honesty to me, he's going to build a wall, but they're still going to bring drugs in the country, guys. They're still going to drop guns and all that in the hood to continue having blacks kill blacks. And to me, it, it's just a cycle. It's going to continue. There's nothing that's going to change unless everybody comes together and change it. So not voting for Trump is not all about Trump. It's about the people that's around him you vote in. If we vote the right people around him or in different positions, you could can, you can contain a Trump, but you can't contain a Trump because you got idiots up there with him doing the same stupid stuff. And I still don't understand why nobody's blasting him about working with Russia, but hey, Obama could get blasted though, right? <laughs> well, thank you for um, thank you for um, paying attention to it. I appreciate it. if you stayed this long. Thank you. If you didn't, I hope to make a video for you to stay next time. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you can be notified of any videos dropping. Um, it's a we're 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 low right now on um. The views and um, the subscribers were at 29, um, which was, I was at 11, I believe, 13 before. That's real good. We're at 29 now. We're moving on up slowly, like George Jefferson would say. Um, well, that's all we have for today. We out. Live, boy.